Good morning, and welcome to the house of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we look at the text from Luke chapter 18 and 19. Uh, Luke 18, verse 31 through 19, verse 10. This is, well, culminates in the story of Zacchaeus, but there are a couple of other stories beforehand that we'll look at as well. It is Lent 5, so we're getting closer to Easter. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and that uh, starts the, the Holy Week process, which is what we're looking forward to very much. And But along the way, we celebrate our little Easter this morning as we journey with Jesus toward Jerusalem, and as we look ahead to the day of resurrection. And so I say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We'll make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's lift our voices to sing, There is a Redeemer. We are quick to judge and slow to accept those whom we consider lower than ourselves. But you show us the way of acceptance, forgiveness, and peace. We honor your name for teaching us to love, for the sake of the one who is the essence of love itself, Jesus Christ, our loving Lord. Amen. Our text is... Luke 18 and 19, selected verses. For the, for the reading right now, I'm going to deal with the Jesus and Zacchaeus section from Luke chapter 19. 
Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The Gospel of our Lord. Dear people of God, I've got two children graduating this year, and I don't know how common that is for that to happen unless we've got twins or something, but they're spread out the right distance in school that I've got, uh, I've got a college graduate coming up and a high school graduate, Julia, my oldest, in a couple of months will be graduating from Columbia College in Chicago, and Evelyn will be graduating from Sturgeon Bay High School. My youngest, he's a junior now, my youngest is gonna be a senior next year. Uh, Michelle and I, my wife and I talk about this a little bit, but we don't really wanna talk about it a lot because things are gonna get kind of weird and kind of quickly, I think. And sometimes I just enjoy looking back and holding on to when they were younger, when they were little, or littler. My kids don't always like looking back at pictures of their former selves, like who were we last week, last year, and they think they look dumb or, well, like children as they were. So they don't, they don't like looking back at that, but Michelle and I totally do. We remember that one Easter, the broken pinky, the bad haircut, and so much more looking back through things this week and eight years ago when we were homeschooling Evelyn made plans to teach herself how to belly dance to the ukulele version of Amazing Grace played by her favorite brother her favorite and only brother by the way now I don't remember that story but I'm really glad to have other like pictures and Facebook posts that remind me of those things and they bring a smile to my to my face. That same year, actually, Julia was 13, she went to camp for a weekend called Reverse Thinking. This is at Lutheran Island Camp in Henning, Minnesota. So she went to camp and there were two presenters who spoke on God's plan for, for people. So God's plan specifically for sex and how it runs contrary to the messages we hear in the world around us today. Not every 13-year-old wants to talk about these things, but I remember Julia was eager to, turn, to learn and came away from it pretty fired up. The main point was that the world thinks differently from the plan God has set in place. It's different. It's foolish, perhaps, as we have talked about over the past couple of weeks. Uh, it's reversed or backward. But the church and God's people who are part of the visible church are going to be awkward or appear out of place oftentimes. That's just how it is. But the ethic for God's people is different. It's not just that we look different, but that we see things differently too. We see sin that leads to mercy. We see wrongs that lead to forgiveness. We see pain that leads to healing. We see oppression that leads to justice. And we see goodness 
that leads to rejoicing. Let's keep our eyes open so that we see those things and we see where and how God is at work in our world today. The title of this message tells us that we're going to focus on Zacchaeus, but the greater context tells us that there's something else to see here. Luke 18, verses 31 through 35. And taking the twelve, Jesus said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and will be mocked and shamefully treated, and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him, and on the third day he will rise. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. As you know, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. That's what we've been talking about. And that's where all the lessons, the stories, the narratives from Luke are leading us. He's on his way to Jerusalem where danger awaits him. There's often a crowd listening. They gather around this teacher and healer. But here, Jesus takes the 12 disciples off to the side to paint a word picture that he wants them to see. He doesn't expect the crowds to get it. He doesn't expect the world to understand, but he, pre he presents it to his disciples. And he begins by saying, behold, or see, it's the same word. So like, look at this, or see this thing that I am telling you. Behold it. He tells them for the third time what's going to happen when they arrive in Jerusalem in gory detail, and they don't get it. Well, they hear his words. There's no language barrier here. They all spoke and understood Aramaic. They just don't understand it. But the gospel continues on. As he and they drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Recover your sight, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Against the backdrop of the twelve disciples' inability to see what Jesus is telling them plainly, is this encounter with a blind man who desperately, more than anything else, wants to recover his sight. Jesus assumes nothing, by the way, when he encounters this blind man. He assumes nothing about what the man actually wants. With an obvious condition like this, we might think it was callous of Jesus to ask, what do you want me to do for you? But Jesus gives him the dignity of stating his request and then promptly heals him and the man could see again. And when the people who were around saw it, even seeing what Jesus did for somebody else, they gave praise to God. That's not a bad way for us to live either. Rejoicing when God is obviously at work in somebody else's life. But here they are in Jericho, finally, about 15 miles from Jerusalem, and Jesus encounters the tax collector Zacchaeus, a wee little man. A wee little man was he, as the song goes. The problem here is again an issue, or problem here is again an issue of not being able to see. The disciples had physical sight, but couldn't see what Jesus was telling them plainly. The blind man couldn't see but still understood the power of God in and through the person of Jesus Christ. 
And now Zacchaeus, who can physically see, needs the right angle to see Jesus for who he is. As he does so, he puts himself in position to also be noticed by Jesus. As a tax collector, he wasn't popular. As a man of shorter stature, he may have been teased. As a rich man, he, by what we've learned about how Jesus deals with rich guys, he shouldn't fare well in a conversation with Jesus. But as a sinner who realized this, he knows that he falls short. No pun, well, pun intended. <laughs> and needed something that only his Savior could give. He climbed the tree so he could see, but it was Jesus who looked for him, and his life was forever different. He reversed his previous way of living. He, instead of taking what didn't belong to him, he gave half of his goods to the poor and gave back four times the amount he stole from people. Who does this? It's not common. It's not normal, but it's the sort of thing that takes place in the life of God's people. Up to this point, well, I keep using vision words here, and I think that's appropriate given what's given to us in the text. But after all this, after the, the Jesus, Jesus explaining, the blind man recovering, Zacchaeus climbing a tree so that he can see. Zacchaeus also uses that behold or that see word. Verse 8, Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, the half of my goods I give. So he gives his explanation in the hearing of all the people. He's defending himself. He's making the case for him being different. He's not a man who is a typical rich man who wants to hold on to all of his goods in this lifetime and maybe in the next. He's not all about position, but he's about seeing the Lord for who he is and letting the Lord do his do work on his heart. God, Lord, I'm going to I'm going to do all this. I'm going to give my goods away. I'm going to I'm going to repay. This is what we do in the kingdom of God. It's not common. It's not normal. It absolutely is opposite thinking of the way that the world works. But Zacchaeus was lost. Jesus came to seek and save people like Zacchaeus, like you and me. And as he did so, we remember that Zacchaeus wasn't high on anyone's list of redeemable people. The tax collector's life would never be the same again after his encounter with the Christ. Jesus calls us to be different, to be someone special for others, not for our own purposes. And along the way, along our own journeys to our destinations, we'll appear out of place, but that's okay. We're in good company because Jesus was like that too. And we are but strangers here. Heaven is our home. May the love of Christ be revealed anew to us every day that we might know him, own our faith, and make him known to the world. In the name and the spirit of Jesus, amen. Let's profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, Yahweh, Lord of all, your name is great and worthy of our praise. 
Even as the creator of the world, you do not operate as the world does. You are beyond. You are other. You are holy. And yet, you come to us. During this season of Lent, as we journey with your son to the cross and through the cross, we admit that we are fearful. We are scared, scared to let go, scared to join in, scared to open up. We are scared to open our hearts, our time, our homes, and ourselves. But we pray to you as the great comforter. And we pray that you would now, that we pray that you would receive us as we come to you. Come to you with an opportunity to speak about and share one another's fears and burdens as we know you always receive ours. Hold us in your healing embrace, all who need you this day. Breathe new life and purpose into all who are suffering, who are in pain, who are wandering in the wilderness, and help them to see you and hear your voice. O oh God, there are so many in need of your tender, loving care in this broken and hurting world. By your Spirit, and to all who are weary and oppressed, may we proclaim the self-giving, nurturing, strengthening and freeing love of Jesus Christ by teaching and living out our faith. Lord, let your spirit run free in our lives, that our eyes would be opened to see you at work, that our eyes would be further opened to see the needs of others, that our hands would be opened in order to care for them in their time of need. Lord, now remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our announcement for next week is that we are looking at Luke 19, verses 29 through 44, the triumphal entry. And this is a text that's commonly associated with Palm or Passion Sunday. And so we'll celebrate that in real time as our services take place here at Prince of Peace in an outdoor setting at 9 o'clock. Uh, we'll celebrate communion that day and then indoors at 10 o'clock. Uh, for more information, you can call the church office at 920-743-7750. And as we close out our time together, we'll lift our voices to sing our closing song, Your Great
souls receive grace at the sound of your great name the fatherless find their rest at the sound of your great name the sick are here the world.